Okay, this is by far gonna be my favorite video probably ever. Um, I love, 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 love supporting black businesses. I love, 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 love supporting black women. And today I went all out for my girl Ashley because she just um, launched a website recently called The Little Bite Kitchen. You can find the information below um, and all throughout this video. But, um, she has recipes and y'all know I don't do recipes. I really don't. I never use them. But Ashley, actually, um, she's been doing the whole food thing about as long as I've been making cooking videos on Instagram. And they're always fun. They're always exciting. I love, love, love her recipes because she's always using fresh ingredients. She's always um, thinking of different ways to combine different things. And she's very very cost effective and those are all things that are important to me so so today we're making her dry rub wings i love 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 chicken like most black people and um i also really love dry rubs um personally if i'm eating chickens i'm using my hands and i typically don't like them to be super saucy because it makes a mess and i hate 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 when my my hands are messy like i wash my hands 18 thousand times a day um, so without further ado, let's get started. Um, oh, actually, let's, let's start with some disclaimers. Specifically for Ashley, because this is her recipe, and I'm just gonna let you know right now, girl, I had to, I had to improvise, because I thought I had cumin, I do not, um, and I don't have any cayenne pepper. I don't know if I ran out or what happened, but I don't have any. So, I'm gonna tell you what those modifications are right now, because, uh, I don't know if it's gonna work or not. I don't know if it's gonna give us the right flavor or not, but we're gonna do it anyway, because it wouldn't be me if we didn't experiment, right? General consensus from my Instagram tells me, you all love recipes. And so I'm definitely linking uh, the littlebitekitchen.com below and the recipe so that you can follow it the right way. Um, I went to the grocery store 14 times to, to make this recipe, but for some reason, I still don't have all the things I need. So the two things I'm missing, again, are the cumin and the cayenne pepper. Now the cayenne pepper is optional, but I love cayenne pepper. I love peppers of all sorts. Um, so to kind of make up for that, um, I used curry powder, cause that's what I had, and red crushed pepper. Now, are they comparable? Probably not, but that's what I had. So that's what I did. Cause I didn't want to just not use anything. Cause I know that there's definitely a factor um, for the complexity of the flavor that I didn't want to miss, so I just kind of filled in the gaps. We'll see what happens. I don't know if it's just the fact that I got this chicken from Walmart, which, I mean, I usually am an advocate of, but y'all, there are so many feathers still on these chicken wings that we're gonna have to make a whole separate video just to clean them. Like, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, if you have feathers on your chicken wings, Please don't be like roosters and ignore them. That was shady. But go ahead and go through and actually take the time to get some of these excess feathers out. It's not easy, but you don't want to eat feathers. So pick it out. Take the time to do it. Um, what else you got to do? We're quarantined. So yeah, I'm going through and cleaning my chicken wings off now. And then I'll come back and we'll get started. While you're cleaning your chicken, you can go ahead and set that oven to 400 degrees. I'm pretty sure that's what she said. 400 degrees. Oh gosh, feathers everywhere. Yeah, set your oven to 400 degrees because we are putting these bad boys in the oven. Okay, so as y'all know, I still don't have um, a clamp for my phone, but I ordered it. It is on the way. We're still janky. Um, yeah, so I went and ahead and uh, pre- portioned out my seasonings isn't that beautiful i love saying herbs in a bowl um but some of them weren't as beautiful i put them in here um but we're gonna combine all of them so let's just what we have here is smoked paprika yes it matters this is not regular paprika crushed black pepper yeah I had to go, I only have pepper grinders. I have multiple pepper grinders, but I only have pepper grinders. I had to grind that black pepper and there was a tablespoon of each of these seasonings. That's how I separated the bowls. I'll explain that a little bit more, but I just want y'all to know it took forever to grind that pepper.
so this recipe was super simple. I actually really love that about it. Um, a lot of the meals on the Little Bite Kitchen are really simple for beginners, um, but they still have that like feel to it that makes you feel like you did something in the kitchen, you know, better than making top ramen, right? Okay, so in this bowl, we have all the ingredients that were a tablespoon each. So we have the smoked paprika, the black pepper, oregano, fresh thyme. She very specifically said fresh thyme. Um, that's onion powder, kosher salt, and garlic powder. So I'm going to take the stems off of the thyme in a bit, but I just wanted to show you what it all looked like in a bowl. Then over here, we have, ignore my charger, um, we have brown sugar, chili powder, regular paprika that you would find just pulverized in a Walmart for 98 cents, a little bit of curry powder, and a whole lot of red, crushed red Quick disclaimer, so the bowl that has the brown sugar, chili powder, regular paprika, and the crushed red pepper, all of those are two tablespoons roughly, but the curry powder, I've barely used a full tablespoon because curry powder has a very distinct flavor, and it's not at all what the recipe called for, so I didn't want to use a lot of it, but I definitely wanted the profile to be in the, or the flavor to be in the, um, the, in the mix. So, um, I'm just going to sit here and shuck my time. I don't really know what the correct term would be, but you just take a little stem like this from the time, and then you go with your hand firmly, press against the stem, and slide down, and that will take all the leaves off. You do not want this in your dry rub, because um, it's not what you want. Trust me. Just trust me. Um, I don't know. Now, the time pictured in the bowl might not be two tablespoons. Didn't measure it, not gonna lie to you. I measured the other ones because this is somebody's recipe and I wanted to do it some justice, um, even though I kind of messed it up with the things that I added to substitute what it called for. Hey, Ashley. Um, but yeah, uh, if not, I have a ton of time. I don't think you can buy a little bit at a, at a time. <laughs> Anyway, um, so I'll just add more, but it it's nice when you have everything kind of still in piles in the bowl because you can kind of, this is a great time to learn what a tablespoon looks like because you can look at the piles in the bowl and compare, like, does this look like the same as what I measured in the other piles? So this is a great time to, to take it in and, and make it a teachable moment and you can learn how to measure without being a pump, I mean, without using a measuring cup or a measuring spoon. So yeah. This is just to show you what the bowl looks like. I know a lot of you asked to see directly into the bowl because I guess my face isn't good enough for you. Um, no biggie. As you request, uh, here we go. So this is just me putting the time, picking some of the leaves off at the top because it's a little bit more flexible and easier to break off at the top. So I just pick the leaves off, but the rest is pretty firm stem. You can just go all the way down. Um, so we're going to do like one more good one of these and then um, if I feel the need to, I'll go in and put some more, but yeah. Okay, so now that we have all of our time in here, we're going to take this beautiful bowl and we're going to add, can you see that? We're going to add all of this yummy stuff to it um you can also just do all of this in one bowl i just wanted to separate it out so you could see the difference between one tablespoon and two tablespoons um and then you're just gonna mix all of that together my brown sugar needs a little bit of leaven and it's gonna make this really really beautiful color and this amazing aroma so just mix until it's all incorporated go in and Crush up some of this brown sugar also. It needs it. Mix with your hands if you bout it. Honestly, I'm bout it. I just want it to be professional, but for who? For what? For why? Urgh. Okay, I went all Hulk smash, hence the, the urgh. Um, <laughs> that indicates that I'm really getting something done, guys. 
Um, so we mixed it all in and I kind of went back through because I kind of, I would rush through my time picking and I just kind of find some of those, uh, stems that kind of fell through the cracks, I guess, and get some of those out of there. Not a huge deal. I don't think so at least, but all right, we have a ball game. We have a dry rub. So now it's time to add to our chicken. Again, this is a super easy recipe, um, and I'm really, really happy that uh, that I actually put it on here because it's going to be delicious. It smells amazing. Okay, so I only have four because I use whole wings, and she said to use a bag of frozen party wings, but I already had whole wings. So um, reading is fundamental, guys. Read recipes. Anyway, so I'm just going to take it little by little, and what we're going to do is just add our dry rub now these wings were frozen because I put things in the freezer after I after I buy them if I'm not gonna make them right away. But I, I thawed them out and then I patted them dry. So we're just gonna take it little by little and kind of make sure that they get fully incorporated or covered. Whatever. You know what I'm trying to say. I get so tongue tied on camera. It's terrible. So then we're gonna throw in a few more. And then we're going to add a little bit more. And you can take them out as they get mixed in and put them on what I'm going to tell you to put them on. Just give me a second. Hello. I have no shame about zooming in on my ashy hands. It means I'm washing them. And I am. So I don't care. So basically, um, I'm massaging the, the seasoning into these wings so they look very thoroughly seasoned. And then what we're going to do, um, she was very helpful with this. I do recommend it. She recommended it as well. You take a baking sheet like so and you line it with foil. Um, and then what you would want to do is take a wire rack and set that on top of the baking pan and then put the wings on top of there. Um, that'll help it get fully crispy. Um, but we didn't do that because I don't have a wire baking rack. Um, so I'm going to just put the wings onto the pan and pray for the best. And she said she didn't use a wire rack either, if I read that correctly. Um, so we're going to do that. And then we're just going to put them on broil for extra. So yeah, the broiling um, will help with the crisp factor. Another thing that you can do, um, I don't know if this is common knowledge or not, but what I like to do is add a little bit of baking powder to whatever, um, if I was using flour or whatever, um, onto my chicken seasoning, and that actually really helps with the crispiness of the skin as well. So you could add a little bit of, of baking powder, I would say maybe a teaspoon or two, and that'll help as well. I didn't do that this time because I really want to see how they come out as is, um, but we'll, we'll try that next time with a different recipe. Okay, let's look at it. Okay, so we have our foil lined sheet and we have our wings. I'm just gonna set them as nice and neatly as I can onto the bag and then I'm just gonna top them off a little bit in places where they look a little bit lighter. No real reason, no real need. Just wanted to do that. And then we're gonna try to squeeze one more in here, like one more baby one. Well, this isn't a baby, but I think we can make it fit. And voila, we have wings ready for the oven. So what we're going to do now is take these and put them in the oven, see how they do. And then I actually have more wings. I'm going to try a different method for those because I'm really curious. All right, so I had about a lot, a lot of wings left over because I bought a... I bought a party pack, just not a not a um, frozen party pack. But yeah, so I have a lot of wings left over. And so I'm going to try a different method. Um, so I just took the little bit of seasoning that was left over from the ones that I did add. And I added the chicken to it. And I'm just going to let that lightly season it. It's not going to cover it really well. But I'm going to let it just kind of lightly season these wings. And then I still have some seasoning left over. Um, perfect measuring sizes. Uh, shout out to Ashley for that because... Um, I thought I might have had too much chicken or it wouldn't be enough seasoning for someone who likes a lot of seasoning or flavor, um, but it looks like it's going to be the perfect amount. You don't want to over season anything. I think people of color tend to do that a lot. Um, but when you get involved with fresh herbs and spices, you can go a little bit heavier on the stuff without MSG. 
Okay, so here's my wings. Not as colorful um, or as coated as the ones that went into the oven. They are in the oven on um, 400 degrees, um, baking their little hearts out, but they're seasoned. These are seasoned pretty well. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is take my cast iron skillet. Do I wanna use the cast iron skillet? Yeah, we'll use the cast iron skillet. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that and throw some butter and a little bit of oil I don't know if I'm gonna use olive oil or canola oil. It'll be a surprise to both of us. Um, and then I'm gonna put the wings in there or put the rest of the seasoning in there and create like a coating that I can pour over, kind of like a sauce for the wings. So I'm gonna try that and then put those in the oven to give them an extra crispiness. Let's see what happens. So we're gonna do like a shallow pan fry. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more. This is canola oil. It's really not gonna make that big of a difference. I'm going to add a, a little bit more. Um, you want it to be about, about, I don't know, deep enough that like you can cover the bottom of the chicken if you need to. So I'm just going to take that and let that get a little bit hotter. And then we're going to dump the chicken wings in, fully cook them, then come back and do the butter seasoning sauce thing that I said we were doing. Um... We're extremely experimental. Um, so we're just gonna take these like so. Okay, so I'm just gonna flip these lovely wings. Looks like we're going to get the job done like this, which is great. So I'm just going to flip them so that the other side can get all fried right. Don't use your hands. I know I talk a lot of mess about using your bare hands. Don't do it. I don't want somebody getting hurt. But yeah, we're going to flip these and make sure that they're getting nice and fried. I'd say these have a really good color on them. So normally, if you were just keeping them like this, you would put them in a um, container to that has like probably paper lining on it so that you could pat the excess oil off. I'm gonna keep the excess oil on. We're just gonna transfer them right on over to good old plate off to the side here. And then we're gonna get rid of some of this oil because it's way too much for what we're trying to do. So we're just gonna get all of these bad boys out. And we're gonna do a quick temperature check on the ones in the oven real quick. Looking gorgeous. All right, and so let's get rid of this oil real quick. So we are left with just residue from the grease that we fried the chicken in. Um, all the excess oil is gone. We're gonna go back and add in that two and a half, I think that is, uh, tablespoons of butter. And then we're gonna go ahead and throw in some oil, just a little bit. And I actually switched it up. It's gonna be, um, it's definitely gonna be olive this time. And just enough to kind of get this back on the right, straight and narrow. And Get some of that out of there so we can take that thyme leaf out. And let that kind of sit and, and pick up everything, that all the drippings in the pan. So now we have like this boiling butter bath and we're gonna just take the rest of our seasoning, throw it in like so. And let's add about two more tablespoons so of butter. So we added more butter and um, we drizzled a little bit more olive oil. Just to like, you'll see, like the, the, the seasoning, the dry seasoning needs to get fully lubricated with butter and oil to create like our sauce. So then we're just going to take our wings and throw them back in and toss them around in this new roux we have going until they're fully coated. 
it's easier with party wings admittedly ashley definitely was suggested but we have whole we're working with whole and you're just going to keep tossing them in this until they're fully coated You're gonna wanna scrape up all that excess at the bottom, like so, and toss. Toss, toss, toss. So it looks like our dry rub wings are ready to come out. I'm just gonna, now, I didn't toss them in oil, so you're gonna see some burnt herbs here, but they actually smell and look amazing. the oven mostly Ashley's recipe style wings um minus the the curry that was involved and the forgetting to put oil on them they came out pretty decent I'm very happy very good crisp on them I think I would throw them in for the broiler for about a minute or so maybe but pretty great and then here we have the like the dirty style <laughs> of the stove top chicken wings i ran out of the green onion that i was cutting so i didn't want to cut more so it's sparse on the garnish but also delicious also great still you know would put them in the broiler maybe for a minute for a little bit of extra doneness but all in all i'm happy with both of these so we're gonna try to taste test it after the french fries are done hey okay so i have one of each i'm not really that hungry after all of that cooking but my french fries came out really good anyway this one is the little bite kitchen recipe and the other one is the stove top eating on camera will never not be weird i love 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 the flavor on these love it i was about to eat some more but we gotta try the stove top one um okay in conclusion the one with the little bite kitchen has way more of the flavor in it mine on the stove were good as well but i definitely like the the dry rub texture and taste um uh yeah so i really really love the flavor on these um the curry didn't, I don't taste any curry. We didn't use a whole lot of it. Um, they're not super spicy with all the chili powder and the crushed red pepper and everything. Um, I would I would give this a key level of about a one. It's not very spicy at all, um, but it is delicious. Like it's a really, really good flavor and the brown sugar really balances the heat and sweet. I, I love it. Um, great with French fries, would also be good with like cabbage or um macaroni and cheese if you're so inclined um but yeah really really great i'm enjoying this i might have a, f a few more i wasn't hungry until i started eating these are amazing so thank you ashley from the little bite kitchen check out her recipes um and meet me back here for whatever we do next